Today we are talking artsy with an on-air host, journalist, and Screen Actors Guild actor. She's worked as an anchor for Channel One News and hosted for many platforms you may know, such as Complex, MTV News, VH1, Revolt TV, SAG AFTRA, and the Bill series. She has also covered red carpets for the Grammys, the VMAs, and the Global Citizen Festival. Welcome, 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 Asia Celestino. Thank you, Tab. That was such a nice intro. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Um, so we met during the final portion of my anti-bullying school tour, and you were actually interviewing me. And then we stayed in touch and talked a little bit about some philanthropic work you were embarking on. Now, we all have dreams and aspirations. It seems like you are living yours. When did you know that hosting, acting, and journalism was for you? Well, first off, thank you for saying that because I think, you know, everyone's always striving toward their dreams. So it, it's nice for someone on the outside to say that it looks like you're living yours. I'm hoping that I am. Um, you know, I'm making decisions every day toward what I'm passionate about. Um, as far as everything I'm doing right now, hosting and producing and acting, I think for the acting side of things, I was always just a really outgoing, performative little kid. So I have home videos, like a ton of home videos, just kind of singing into the camera and acting out scenes from my favorite Disney movies. and. I have a really big Filipino family, so as you can imagine, our parties are kind of crazy, and sometimes there would be like karaoke or just a microphone that was hot, so I remember being like maybe three or four years old, and it wasn't even necessarily, um, you know, time to sing, but I would just get up there and start singing Colors of the Wind from Pocahontas or something, um, yes. and then after that, I think my mom kind of capitalized on the fact that I was so outgoing as a little kid, and she would always push me to get in front of people and showcase wow. my talents, and she was the one who really inspired my sister and I to start going out on auditions and um, mm. doing small acting roles here and there. So. Um, from there, also got into dance. I did Polynesian dance growing up, hip hop not as successfully. <laughs> um, I did competitive cheerleading, so I was always kind of in that realm of performance. And then for broadcast journalism and hosting, I think I grew up watching TV shows like TRL um, and 106 and Park. And I just loved that idea of the VJ and the fact that that was a career. Wow. So I didn't necessarily think like, oh, one day I want to be a TV host. That never really crossed my mind. I think it was a lot simpler than that. I really loved my English classes. I enjoyed creative writing and I loved telling stories and talking with my friends about what I had heard and what was going on and things like that. So I think pursuing broadcast journalism and hosting was kind of born more so out of that. And it just turned out that I also liked the performance aspect of being on camera and, you know, gearing up to get in front of an audience and, and tell them what was going on. So that's wow. kind of like long story short when it comes to the acting, hosting, reporting producing stuff that's amazing um it's funny like I, I've also had a chance to get inspiration through my English classes as well uh because you know different activities like free writing and that allowed me to like express myself and uh that also gave me a little introduction to uh, like standing in front of the classroom and sharing the story so I can definitely relate to that um absolutely and I think I, I would be remiss to not mention that I had a really, really wonderful English teachers throughout middle school and junior high, yeah. and I think they really 
instilled that creativity and that confidence in me and I don't know that I would have been able to cultivate that passion for creative writing and for literature and English if I didn't have those teachers. So true. And um, you have interviewed so many greats uh, such as Dwayne, The Rock Johnson, uh, Reese Witherspoon, Kevin Hart, uh, Mindy Kaling, DJ Khaled, uh, Timbaland, Zendaya, and Oprah Winfrey. Like, that's pretty insane. Um, kudos to you, but like, what are your two most memorable interview experiences? Oh man, that's so hard because you just listed a roster of A-list celebrities. But I would have to say, obviously, Oprah, just because I mean, it's Oprah Winfrey, and she's such a force. Um, I didn't get a crazy amount of time with her, which hopefully one day we can sit down one-on-one. It was actually during the A Wrinkle in Time junket, and it was so funny because I came in dressed up um, because it was Oprah, Reese Witherspoon, (laughs) and Kaling all in one room, and I had heels on because I'm like, got to dress up for Oprah and Reese and Mindy. So I come in and I sit down and Oprah, I'll I'll never forget this, she was just like, you know you don't have to wear those, right? And at the time, I didn't think of it, but I should have just kicked the heels off and been like, whatever you say. She was wearing sneakers, like she was so chill. Um, But I thought it was funny that I felt like I was prepping and gearing up and wanting to look nice for them and she kind of brought things back down to perspective, like had me kind of reassess why I'm doing things. And and the interview itself, the topics, I think that was kind of reflective of what we spoke about. We talked about um, for young people and especially young girls, how we sort of move through life and deal with failure and are so afraid of it. So I'll definitely remember that one. She gave great advice. Um, Another interview that you mentioned was Dwayne The Rock Johnson, and it wasn't necessarily the interview itself that stands out to me, but I always tell people this story because I think it's so important. He is so successful, and on a red carpet, I don't know if he still does this to this day, but on a red carpet that I went to, um, he did press with all of the major entertainment outlets, but he stayed late and and went into his screening late because he wanted to make sure that he spoke with literally every outlet on the carpet. And if you're an entertainment journalist or a reporter, you know that sometimes you're going to go to a carpet and unless you're like an E or an Access Hollywood or an ET, you're probably not going to get the biggest people unless you like hounded their publicist beforehand. But he pretty much ignored his publicist and made sure that he made the rounds and spoke with every single person on the carpet. And I will never forget that feeling just because he was already a global superstar at that point. It wasn't like back in his wrestling days. Um, But I think it's just such a testament to his character. Mm. Wow. Yeah, and you could kind of see that, um, you know, like consistently on, on camera as well. Um, so it's yeah, amazing and it to makes you that. happy that someone like that is successful. Like someone that seems like a genuinely good person has also found success. That's like the perfect lineup. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. Um, it's crazy. Like when I was younger, uh, I loved watching uh, the Grammys and the VMAs because it gave me so much inspiration as to like you know, like, what I wanted to become. And I'm sure it's, like, the same for a lot of young people right now. Um, How has your perspective changed and what have you learned since covering these events? That's a really good question. And I'm not really sure. I have to say, every red carpet or award show that I've gotten to cover has felt like a Cinderella moment for me. And I I know that sounds so cheesy, but no. I I realize that they're not like the most relaxing atmospheres to be in, especially when it comes to 
the work of a reporter or anyone who works in media, really. Mm-hmm. But even though they are really stressful situations, I've always found them to be kind of a marker of like how far I've come, in a sense. And I try to use those highlights as moments to really um, practice gratitude. Mm. So even though, like I said, it can be really tough to be on red carpets and it's very artificial in many senses because, you know, everyone's kind of gearing up for this specific moment or uh, they're being sponsored by a certain designer and Mm. they have very specific um, motivation for topics they want to talk about in, in like a two minute interview. Um, so there are so many different things going on. It can feel really frantic and, um, like I said, really artificial. But I've found that there can be a lot of beauty in those moments if you just take a moment to appreciate your own progress and how far you've come. It can be really hard. <laughs> When you're like caught up in the frenzy of everything, but I think right. that's really important. Um, if if you do care about having a career in entertainment, to stop and think about how fortunate you are and how much privilege you have to do what you love. Absolutely, and I can relate to that, um, especially like the the first time I got a chance to uh, perform at Madison Square Garden and. You know, in the moment, like, because it was so young uh, and the opportunity came then, you know, it was like, oh, man, I, I got to make this perfect. Um, there's so many people watching. I only have five minutes. Everything has to be right for the uh, for the set. So, um, you know, the pressure is on. But then it's like afterwards you can finally, like, take a deep breath. Or even before, you know, you take a deep breath and you're like, wait, like, I'm here. Like, <laughs> this is what I've been working for all my career. And it's like here and um i feel like that's the that's the bliss you know it's like before and after during it's like it's happening you know so you're like wired but it's like right afterwards it's like wow i'm so grateful to be here so that's amazing that you said that um something i could definitely relate to and um you know before getting to the mindset that i am in today uh, i have gone through many struggles and obstacles and changes and you know from living in the projects to dealing with stigmas um did you ever have to overcome any struggles oh my gosh absolutely i would love to meet someone who's never overcome any struggles because i think it would be interesting to see what their path has been like Mm. um but i would say my struggles weren't necessarily from a position of um, financial hardship i feel really blessed to say that I had a very loving and supportive family growing up, so I recognize that that is a privilege. I would say a lot of my challenges have actually come more recently in my career, or maybe I'm just starting to realize and acknowledge those challenges. Mm. I think the downside of having a perspective of gratitude is sometimes you have almost this this like positivity imbalance mm. where you don't necessarily uh, focus or address your conflict head on. And something that I've realized recently is that while it's great to appreciate the highlights and the great times, it's also really important to address and check in with yourself and how your mental state is. Because I think I was putting a lot of value in in the red carpet moments and like the really highs, um, but I wasn't taking time to appreciate the struggle part of things or what I could learn from not getting what I wanted. Um, Mm -hmm. And that's something that I've been pushing through recently. And I think there's also something to be said about working in entertainment and media in that it feels like you're always almost in the hands of someone else. 
And I don't know if that's just something that I've experienced, but I think if you're an actor, it means that you can prepare for an audition and you can do amazing. But at the end of the day, there are so many other people who have to make a decision about your work, whether it's a casting director or a producer or um, someone else in the line of production. When you're on air talent, if you're a reporter, Sometimes you might lose out a job to someone who has a bigger following than you, who doesn't necessarily have the same amount of experience, but that doesn't take away from the fact that you still need to cultivate a really strong sense of self-worth and self-value right. and, and really stay grounded and true to who you are. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and um that's 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 a great jewel for uh for many people who are on their journey right now to um becoming who they want to become um uh, because that's that's like something that I've learned from as well you know to not only have like I have so many friends that are on your talents or who also work in corporate and are going through the same type of um challenges um, of like having their career be in someone else's hand and not knowing when uh, you know it could be taken away from them and I feel like that's why I push so much for independence as well you know yeah. having that balance obviously not like just complete because you need you need a little bit of both to you know just in case and to build yourself up um, on the way so that's so important Definitely. Um, well and I think it's also important to point out that you can go through your whole life feigning confidence and you might even fool yourself. You can definitely fool other people into thinking you're confident, but until you really sit down and look at yourself and your flaws and your shortcomings and weaknesses and places that you may have been avoiding, you're never going to feel truly in your power. That's a wow. really big thing that I've, I've started to realize is that, you know, I thought I felt great about my accomplishments or my talents or my goals, my relationships, all of the different aspects of my life, even outside of work and my career. It's so easy to just create this image of yourself because you're always trying to project it out toward other people. Right. And it's easy to start to believe that image instead of really taking the time to sit down and focus on really getting to know yourself. Again, at the risk of sounding super cheesy, all of these things sound corny, but they are so true. I think it's, it's really important to check in with yourself um, once a day, definitely once a week. <laughs> Um, and right. really try to like sit with your feelings and and gain more of an awareness of them and let that guide you versus what you, especially if you work in media and entertainment, especially if you work in the industry. Don't let ideas or images that people are putting out there guide you on what it is that you want to do and and don't let those projections influence your choices you totally have to have to think for yourself like sit down what I like to do if I if I'm indecisive about something which is like all the time because I'm a Gemini I sit down and I really try to sit with both outcomes and think okay how does how does this vision make me feel and then how does that one make me feel and sometimes it's, it's not going to come in like 10 minutes, um, but it's all about making the time to really like have a conversation with yourself about what you're doing and try to understand how it really makes you feel. Not how you think it should make you feel or how other people feel, but how you personally feel. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. And, and that's, that's like... The key to happiness, right? Like, not just like saying, "Oh, you should do what makes you happy." You know, do what makes you feel happy. Mm -hmm. um, 
And um, that's like something that I've been learning as well, like as of late, you know. And you know how sometimes you think like, oh, I wish I knew this when I was younger or, what, or when I had this opportunity. I wish I knew this now that I know it mm-hmm. now. Oh my um, gosh, do it all the time. <laughs> yeah, and it's, you know, it's um, it's inevitable. But that's definitely a, another jewel. Um, and in order to keep myself going, you know, I have like certain things in place to remind me of where I am today and where I'm going. Uh, can you give us some tips that you use to stay positive and motivated daily? Yeah, I mean, I think I, I try to change things up because the thing with positivity is, again, it can be a trap. You don't want to try to force yourself to feel happy if you're not. You want to listen to the voice that's telling you, like, I don't really feel great. And you want to really try to explore why that might be. So, you know, just stuffing your emotions into a cabinet somewhere and telling yourself, I feel great, I feel fine, I'm happy. That can only work for so long. Um, so I think it's it's about, again, sitting down and checking in with yourself. Something else I like to do um, is write in a gratitude journal. And I find that I, I only do this if I feel motivated. So once it becomes a chore, I stop doing it for a little bit and I'll give myself permission to take a break. Um, but it helps if, if you literally write it down with a pen and paper or if you want to use the notepad in your phone if you're just you know commuting somewhere or you have a moment to breathe sometimes it feels nice to just think of the things that you feel grateful for right now so it might be that you woke up today that you have shelter that you have a really beautiful spacious apartment um that you have all of your senses and your physical body is healthy and capable of doing all the things that you need to do to get through your day and to pursue your dreams. Like things like that, that are just very basic. It doesn't have to be like, oh, I just made, you know, a bonus. I got a promotion. It doesn't have to be the things that aren't always there, but even just like the basic things. Those are what I like to go through. And if you don't want to write them down, it could just be you know, sitting in bed, starting your day with those thoughts of being thankful and being grateful. Mm -hmm. And then something else that I really like recently that I've started doing is trying to get my friends and my family to do is, and this is really hard, especially if you're not a morning person, which I don't feel like I am. It takes me like three hours to get ready in the morning. So I know if I have to be ready, especially if you have to be like on camera ready, it takes even longer. So if I have to be ready on time, I love to give myself huge buffers of time, like two hours. So this works for you. If you have a ton of time in the morning or if you can make time for yourself in the morning, what I like to do is wake up, check in with yourself because sometimes people wake up and they automatically feel horrible, right? I think we have all had those days where it's like a Monday, and maybe you're not as excited about what you're doing this week, and you just automatically start your day with that feeling of, like, blah. And what I like to do when I'm feeling like that is to remember that being happy and feeling joy are both choices. So you can start your day waking up, feeling kind of slow and tired, or you can start your day with a clean slate. And that doesn't mean you have to force being happy. It doesn't mean you have to wake up with like birds in your hair and music playing in the background um, to, to pull an image from like Cinderella or something. It's not a fairy tale every day, but you can wake up with a neutral, clean slate. And before you get out of bed, envision all of the things that you're going to do happening in the most amazing way possible. So uh, let's say you're looking for a job. So it's easy to wake up that day kind of cranky, right? You're like, I need a job, I need money. But maybe you wake up that morning and you're like, okay, 
I'm on my job search. I'm going to do some research today and I'm going to find amazing opportunities and so many possibilities for my next means of employment. Mm -hmm. And then also take a moment. So this, this will take you like 20 minutes. Take a moment to really feel what that will feel like. So when you're on your computer or your phone and you're looking for a job, that feeling of like excitement and passion when you come across a position that you really, really like or that you're really interested in, and feel that for a couple minutes. And then don't get out of bed until you go through your day and you get genuinely excited about the possibilities of what could come to you. And I feel like that's something really powerful that I've started doing when I have time or when I can make time or when I'm feeling kind of down or I'm not motivated. That really helps me. Um, and you can also do it at night. Like I said, if you're not a morning person, maybe you go through your day and you have a lot to accomplish and you just can't focus in the morning unless you get up and at it. So maybe that means taking time in your evening and instead of being on your phone and scrolling because you know it's going to make you feel bad anyway, um, getting off social media, turning off your phone, putting it in the corner and letting it charge and recharging yourself and thinking about your next day and how it's going to play out and really holding holding on to those emotions of, of things you want to feel. Wow, I like that. Uh, those that play on words where you said uh, turning off your phone letting your battery recharge and recharging yourself um, that was amazing um, everything you said today was amazing um, because I feel like it, it's going to help so many people um, I hope so it really helps me so I love hearing when my friends or my family take my unsolicited advice so the fact that you want to ask me for advice I was like okay I'm excited <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. And, um, you know, thank you so much for taking the time to share your perspective with us today. Um, it was great talking with you. Uh, thank you for inspiring me and so many other people who are listening. And, um, yeah, thank you. You're so welcome. Thank you for having me.